So the point is, when you think about how chances and probabilities are given, you have to keep in mind what's known as the base rate. How often is the condition in the population to figure out how much of a concern, how much of a concern you should actually have? Okay. Now, what I want to do now is turn to something that I think is a motivator for what uh, people often think of as signs of causation or signs of something important, and that is coincidences. Okay. So, to begin with. What do we mean by a coincidence? Well, normally I think a coincidence is just something that happens which is so rare or unlikely that we just can't believe that it would actually be due to chance and that, or, and that we would be lucky enough to see this rare chance event. But there's an important thing to keep in mind about how we describe the event that we're talking about. So what I want to do is put up a, a kind of an anecdote here from Richard Feynman who is the Nobel Prize physicist who did a lot of fantastic work at Caltech. And so Feynman was this incredibly charismatic individual. And so as he was started off one of his lectures, he said, you know, the most amazing thing happened to me tonight. I was coming here on the way to the lecture, and I came in through the parking lot, and you won't believe what happened. As I was coming through the parking lot, I saw a car with the license plate ARW357. Can you imagine, of all the millions of license plates in the state, what was the chance that I would see that particular one tonight? Amazing. That's incredible. And what Feynman's trying to do here, and I thought, or the point Feynman's making, is that extremely low probability events happen all the time. But the thing is, we have to realize that when it, low probability events happen all the time when something is forced to happen. And then you go and you try to figure out retrospectively what the chances of that particular thing happening. And that can, that can be misleading in this case of the license plate. So the, pro, the thing is, coincidences only appear coincidental sometimes when you think about the probability in retrospect. And so this is what um, a mathematician called Percy Diaconis calls the blade of grass paradox. He says, suppose I'm standing in the middle of a large field, like out here at the How the Light Gets in Festival. Suppose I'm wandering around and I just put my finger on a blade of grass. Well, if you think about all of the blades of grass here, the chance of picking the particular one you did is phenomenally low. But it's certain that you're going to put your finger on a blade of grass. Um, Percy Diaconis is really fantastic because he's a mathematician, but he got interested in paradoxes and coincidences through the most peculiar life history. He, he, when he was a teenager, he ran away to join the circus. And he was in the circus for a number of years before he then went back to school and studied mathematics. And he got interested in gambling. And he was you know, hired by casinos to figure out how many times you have to shuffle a deck of cards before you know, for it to be random and so on. So really a fantastic individual. OK, so now here's a question I want to put to all of you to consider. OK, and this is a true story. <clears throat> a New Jersey woman won the lottery twice. Right? If each lottery offered a 1 in 4 million chance of winning, how likely was such an outcome? OK. So think about that. So oh, um, say, doesn't really matter. Say, like, within a four, say, um, I think the actual statistics were within a four-month period. So say, like, within a four-month period, she won the lottery twice. Um, you're right. I mean, if someone could live infinitely often, right, and it's probably less surprising that it would happen in the course of their lifetime. OK. OK, depending on how often she enters. OK, so 1.6 times 10 to the 13th. OK, 1 in 16 million. OK, very good. OK, so what we're seeing here is that this is just one of those miraculous events. So the, you know, if it's a 1 in 4 million chance of winning, and you think of those as independent, then the way you would do that you know, from probability theory, you multiply them and you get a 1 in 16 trillion chance 
of that occurring. Okay, that's pretty extraordinary. But the point is, the actual chance is about 1 in 30, not 1 in 16 trillion. Okay, why? Okay, why? It's the blade of grass paradox. What's going on is, when you think about how likely is this such an event, you're thinking about the right answer to the wrong question. It's not a question about how likely is it that that woman would have won the lottery twice. We're asking the question, out of all of the hundreds of millions of people who play the lottery in America, and who play the lottery repeatedly in America, how likely is it that one person would win the lottery twice? And that's the reason of why the odds are so fantastically low. Right? And so the reason why I mention this is that if you think about coincidences, and you think, well, what would actually motivate you to thinking about maybe whether someone has engaged in fraud, whether they cheated, maybe they had some inside connections on the lottery board. If you think, well, a one in 16 trillion chance is so low, shouldn't we do an investigation to see whether or not there was some fraud? Well, again, you have to be careful about what, this, what the calculation is. OK, another coincidence. So um, Diaconis writes, so I had a friend watching a James Bond film, and there was a four-digit code on a bomb that matched my bank account. OK, well, here's the thing. You know, there are 10,000 four-digit numbers. If you know 120 numbers, you know, credit card numbers, phone numbers, pin codes, and so on, do the maths. You know, there's a one in four chance that two of those will have digit, four digits that match that, that number. Again, a coincidence that's not so coincidental. The principle that's at work here is that when thinking about coincidences, quite often people don't specify in advance what would count as a coincidence. And there are so many multiple endpoints about what could count as a coincidence that you can easily retrofit something after the fact to be seen as this remarkable coincidence. Okay, and again, that can mis mislead people. Okay, all right, so finally, so um, a friend said, you know, look, my daughter, myself, my husband all have birthdays on the 11th of a month. Okay, well, how many birthdays does a person have to know for there to be a 50-50 chance that three are on the same day of a month? Turns out you only need to know about 18, okay? But now, there are some other examples of this which are quite interesting. So, um, this is a point about near coincidences. So if you allow the, what counts as a coincidence to be fuzzy, they're much easier to find. Take, for example, some variations on this birthday question. So to begin, um, let's take a look at this first question. How many people do you need for there to be a 50% chance? How many people in a room like this do you need for there to be a 50% chance that two have a birthday on the same day? OK. So if no one else is going to write an answer, then apparently you all have already seen this problem before, because that 23 is the correct answer. So thanks to whoever kind of you know, spoiled the setup <laughs> at that point. OK. All right. But um, what about this? So um, how many people do you need there to be for there to be a 50% chance that two people have OK, someone else has already, um, OK. So OK, so I'm thinking I might just need to skip the rest of this section. Um, OK, so how many people do you need there for it to be a 50% chance that two have the birthday in the same week? OK, so this is a little bit better. Um, but the thing is, if you look at the point here, so same day, within one day or within the same week, 23, 14, 7. So coincidences occur much more frequently than you actually like. And, or you would expect. And so the thing is, we're very e prone to inferring causality from things we think of as very low probability because it just can't be an accident. And this can very easily lead us astray. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.